Hello, it's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes. And this week I'm going to give you something a little different. I'm going to take you into my jewelry collection. Now, you might be surprised, but I've only really been collecting jewelry um, as a collecting hobby since about 2018. And so I thought I would give you a look at a few of my gold tone brooches. Um, there might be some gold plated in here. I'm not sure how far along I'll get because there's quite a few. But I find since brooches are not worn anywhere nearly as much as they were, uh, say, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, uh, even in the 80s, um, that brooches are easily found at very low prices and uh, they're turning up less and less in jewelry jars but uh, I've been able to acquire quite a few um, beautiful uh, both uh, named marked specimens and unmarked specimens so I thought I'd start with this first piece this lovely leaf is a trafari brooch and you can see the trafari mark um, obviously been used the um, pin is a little bent but uh, that uh, doesn't detract at all from the tremendous design it's just, just the classic beauty of that I mean the, the little on upturn of the bit of leaf the uh, repoussé so that that it's um, shaped it's not flat anyway Drafari is always very good and this is another Trafari brooch. Um, I guess you could wear it this direction, this direction. You could wear it any way you want. Uh, marked here. Um, and a classic flame design. It, it almost looks enameled, but it's not. It's just a gold-toned um, metal. Um, be I think perhaps because I live in Canada um, th that I'm able to find... Um, Boucher pieces, Marcel Boucher pieces quite easily and I have a few of his series of flowers. This is the pansy and what I like about Boucher pieces is that they're well marked. Um, you can see it says the, I guess I should put it this way, there we go, Boucher and then the, the number and then right here on the stem it says pansy. This is the Boucher hibiscus. I love this. It's just so perfectly represents the hibiscus. And um, again, a Boucher hibiscus marked. Um, you never know which way the mark is going to be. Oh, I guess that's the hibiscus word. And then on this side over here. Um, Boucher and then it's number I also have the Boucher chrysanthemum which I, I think the hibiscus is best represents the flower in a metal form but uh, this again is lovely and very recognizable and it's marked underneath in here so it's a little more difficult to show you the markings I'm not sure if I can if I can well anyway you can see that that it is marked and uh, there's the code number Boucher and then well maybe that's chrysanthemum there and Boucher on the other side or down below here oh yeah down below so sorry about that so chrysanthemum underneath the the bar let's see if I can lift the bar There we go, chrysanthemum, and then the code number, and way down under the stem, copyright Boucher. There should be another. Oh, 
Well, I don't know. I have a Boucher envelope here and no, no brooch. That's because I have the wrong one. Okay, that's the Boucher. So this is a lovely um, little pea pod with the uh, pearls in it. And the, um, the faux pearls are not uh, damaged. This design shows up. Uh, from other manufacturers, not exactly identical, but I'm pretty sure there's a Monet and a Trafari version. This is by Capri, and so this I thought uh, I uh, thought was a lovely design, and also then to find that it was marked was really um, quite lovely. I love the detail. Oh, here's another Marcel Boucher, Boucher piece, and this is not a flower. This is just a, a textured uh, gold tone ribbon. And well, you can see on the back. Maybe if, well, if I can zoom in on that or not. There we go. Boucher. So my next brooch here is another leaf. Well, I would call it a leaf or a heart brooch. It reminds me more of a leaf, but it could be a stylized heart. Um, and this is a JJ brooch. There's the marking on the back. Um, a slightly older style of um, pin brooch where it's a bar with the... Um, can attach some an even older style is a V style which some of these have as well I think I don't have very many JJ pieces but I do run across the occasional one um, I have a couple of Park Lane pieces sorry I'll show you the back first because that's where it's marked oh sorry this is not Park Lane <clears throat> this is Trafari I guess it got mixed up with the uh, Park Lane so this is another Trafari brooch um, <clears throat> And quite a lovely style. It looks like glossier gold tone here and then satin gold tone through there. I'm not sure if that's true because the whole back is also that sort of satiny gold tone. But a uh, really timeless style. This is a Park Lane brooch. It's one of the few colored enameled brooches that I have. But again, a lovely leaf style and marked park lane down there um I, as i was going through the brooches and seeing how many are in the leaf style i was trying to you know speculate if this was to emulate a time when people wore real uh leaves real you know um corsages boutonnieres <clears throat> um or why i guess why are leaves such a classic brooch design <clears throat> um, and speaking of leaves, here's another leaf. I love the enameling on this. I love the curled leaves. It reminds me of um, many of the designs of Sarah Coventry leaves that curl and move, have all this movement in them. This one is not marked in any way, and yet it is beautifully made. This shows you the, the a newer um, type of pin where each end of the pin is is attached directly to the pin itself instead of this style where it's attached to a bar so there's an unmarked brooch um there's another unmarked brooch but i think it has i, think I saw a, a serial number or a code number on it somewhere anyway this has a third design um this is the older V-shaped clasp on the back, riveted to the center, riveted in place on the brooch. And this is just a, a, a triple swirl, but isn't that a nice um, combination of the smooth swirl and the textured swirl, almost as if it were um, uh, gold, uh, gold nuggets. Of course, it's not gold, but still very lovely. <clears throat> now this is, um, uh unusual find i think this is actually a kristen Dior. 
or Dior. I guess I better, there we go. You can see it. Um, brooch. <clears throat> when I found this, I, I paid an absurd, uh, absurdly small amount for because I didn't know that it was anything special. Um, and, and I found it, I think, in 2019. And then at the time, they were listed online in the $100 range. Um, I have no idea um, what it would sell for today. I haven't checked lately, but I love the design. It's, it could be worn with anything. You know, of course you could wear this with jeans. It's like a knotted rope. Or you could wear this on a the lapel of a suit jacket, on a little black dress. It goes with anything. And then I have Canadian um, designer. This is a brooch by Jennifer Poon, P-O-O-N. And I'm not sure if there's a special way you can wear it. Um, you know, you just wear it based on where you want to put the clasp and um, of course I've got the signature upside down. So that is where it says Jennifer Poon. <clears throat> so that was a nice find. Someone local for me. Um, one of the things I started collecting early was um, Monet. And it's, you know, fairly readily available. There's a number of different signatures you'll find. You'll find uh, there's the Monet with the copyright, the uppercase M and the lowercase letters. And I've seen several of these. I actually happen to own two. Um, so this is uh, around a 1990s Monet. This is one of my first Monets that I found. And I was thrilled to see it and recognize it for what it was. It's one of their classic designs with the wired um, butterfly wings and of course the label is under the pin there this is the uppercase uh, Monet so it's um, I think 60s 70s I'm not I'd, I'll have to go back and check but I knew this is older than that swirl <clears throat> Here's another swirl, but it's kind of like, um, I don't know, ribbons, a cascade of ribbons. You could wear it different ways. And there's the marking inside with the lowercase letters. Certainly some of these look like um, ribbons where you might have had a ribbon tied on your collar of a blouse or attached um, to a dress again another mixed case Monet um, I love the texturing on this so that it, it looks like it sparkles um, and yet it's all just uh, textured here's a, uh, a variation on a circle pin with uh, faux teardrop pearls and there's the, can we get it to focus? There's the Monet marking. <clears throat> so these were all found uh, in uh, thrift shops or, or jewelry jars here in Canada. Another Monet, sorry, with the mixed case. Again, type of ribbon. And then here's my final Monet. Again, lowercase or mixed case. And there we are, sort of four rings intertwined. Um, could be anything, but a nice accent. You could wear it, do it vertical, horizontal. You could uh, dangle some charms on it. So very versatile. These I've run across uh, several of these. These are orchid pins, um, or they also can be used as a pendant. And they take 
actual orchids they might they might be dried at this point I'm not sure but they take orchids and they electropate them with gold so these are marked um, 22 karat gold plate um, and my mother grows orchids beautiful blooming orchids I gave her one and she wears it but they're each of them are quite unique and you can see how it sort of captures all the little elements of the orchid flower uh, in the gold this is a lovely little vintage brooch with pearls. Again, leaves. These leaves, unfortunately, kind of remind me of poison ivy leaves. They're not um, exactly like poison ivy. A little too jagged, but yeah, very close. And the kind of berries that come on poison ivy are red, I think. But um, uh, a lovely textured and uh, lots of movement in this beautiful pin. And Cindy paired it with these gold-plated earrings. They don't um, match perfectly, but they're uh, a nice little set, nice little vintage set. This pin, uh, I picked it up because I liked it. I Oh, things are not focusing very well. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, it's just brass or gold, you know, gold tone brass. You can see the brass better on the back. And it's pressed, a pressed pin. It it's, looks like something that would be uh, made by 1928 company. Um, I don't have any idea of the real age of it. I don't think it's old. I think it's more that era of the 1928 jewelry. But I like it just the same. This is another bar pin that I thought, I came from a jewelry jar and I thought it was quite unusual. Let's see if I can get this to focus. There we go. So this one has some um, sort of purplish clear and blue or um, aqua marine uh, rhinestones. A bar pin, not marked. And again, um, not, you know, terrifically vintage, but again, an interesting style. And I like the little bit of bling in the color. This um, is an older vintage pin. You can tell by the riveted uh, v or y-shaped uh, clasp structure very nicely textured and sort of a classic leaf pin I see a lot of these around here I keep thinking they are um, Sarah Coventry they're not um, but it reminds me of Sarah Coventry and whoever made them they seem to have sold a lot or a lot have migrated to my area of Ontario Canada because I, I I could probably have bought 10 of these in the last four years and I have to keep resisting the urge to do so because every time I look at one I go wait a minute no I have one of those and, and one is plenty for a collection this is um, another a little bit more blingy gold tone pin Again, ribbons, but now accented with rhinestones. Very nicely made. Um, very nice texturing on the back. Again, not marked in any way. So some unsung great manufacturer out there made this lovely pin. I like this pin as well. I, again, I thought this was probably a named manufacturer. Just by the design, it's a little more... Uh, on the aggressive side in terms of the design, it's not, uh, it's very sharp and angular, um, but not marked in any way. So, but a nice little pin. This again is an older pin, the Y-shaped uh, clasp. Again, a leaf design, something that you would, you know, easily attribute to Sarah Coventry or Monet or Jafari, but... It's not marked and I like the use of the smooth and textured uh, metal to give you the different sparkle the movement within the pin this is uh, a lighter weight pin I don't know if I can get it to focus because it's not an unusual size I like the um, the wire work in this part of the pin, this reminds me of our, our symbol for Ontario, which is the, um, oh gosh, I'm going to say trefoil, but it's not. It's um, the trillium. The trillium flowers, our provincial flower, and it's usually represented as through these three petals. 
Um, so this is a nice pin. Again, not marked, um, but nice, uh, uh, a much more lightweight pin compared to the others. I mean, this has got to be four times the weight of that. And yet they both have very nice presents. This is a Bond Boyd pin. Find a lot of Bond Boyd. Can we get it to focus on it? There's the Bond Boyd mark, gold filled. Not sure what that black stuff is up there. I think it's just the metal got heated or um, somebody tried to test it perhaps. There we go. This is a lovely little, again, a much more lightweight pin uh, along the lines of this one in terms of the weight. But because it's um, gold filled, you see that it gives off a different, a better, a better gold sparkle. Um, and again, the classic sort of leaf, leaf and bud or leaf and flower design. This is uh, an older manufactured pin. I, I'm pretty sure it's part of an initial set. Or this would be letter O, I think. This is from Mamzelle. Whoops. Again, I always put it upside down. There you go, Mam Mamzelle. Um, I suppose it could go this way um, and not be a letter O, but I guess I... I shouldn't assume anything, should I, if I haven't I haven't researched this. But this is the first piece of Mamsel I've found. This Oh yeah, this is okay, so this is the piece of jewelry that's got a code number on the back. Kinda looks uh like the Boucher pieces. Nine I think it's that's a four five or yeah, four five eight eight. And this is a lovely uh pendant brooch combination um, and I like the dangles to give it the movement um, I have no idea who made it I would say you know with the way that the clasp is soldered on it's not you know like the older vintage V vintage V clasps or Y clasp um, but I'm, I'm intrigued that it has its own code number all right okay so this is uh, another circle pin with um, faux pearls, or it could be, you know, probably a wreath pin. And this is from Avon. And here's the Avon marking. Of course, it's upside down. Oh, no, it wasn't. Okay. There you can see Avon. Um, so I, I, I thought this was some... Um, probably a little bit older design for Avon because it's also sort of weighty in terms of its style. This is an unmarked piece and I liked it because it's made of mother of pearl or shell. There's the shell in there. Um, you can see that it's the shell is secured with a band of wire in there. Is it gonna focus? Yeah, there's the band of wire sticking up. So I have to watch to make sure that doesn't come loose. And then it's a little uh, bent down here at the end. I'm not sure if that's, you know, how the person made it when they secured the real shell in there. But I love the, the colors of the shell. And uh, I just happened to think it was a lovely little brooch. This is a brooch um, I was happy to find. It was in Niagara Falls. And uh, this is a Florenza uh, cameo. And it actually is a real shell cameo. Um, you can look at the substantial depth of this uh, so that it really raises the, the cameo up. It's not a great carving. That woman looks like she has a mustache, kind of, or she's angry. Um, but to find a real shell, intact cameo with uh, all the faux pearls and such an elaborate setting uh, was a real thrill for me. And uh, it just happened to, I think after breakfast, we stopped into a thrift shop of some point, type and I found this. Here's another cameo, much... Um, prettier 
uh, carving. Unfortunately, this is plastic. Um, you know, it's got some height to it, but and it, and it's made to look like shell. But I'm pretty sure, looking at the back here, that that's not shell. That's poured plastic with those little holes in it. This is a Jerry's pin. I have a few other Jerry's. I'll have to dig them out. I'm not sure if we can get that to focus any better on the name Jerry's. There you see it. So this can both be a, a pendant and a pin. So another cameo pin that I have run across. I don't um, have a lot of cameo pins, but if I find them uh, and they are shell pins, I would buy them. This, I'm going to just quickly look because I thought it said something. Oh yeah, this is a different name. This is Forstner. F-O-R-S-T-N-E-R. I don't know the background of this company. Um, but I love the pin and I love the the different colors of metal in it. And it's, it's a nice, light, uh, kind of a delicate pin. And I think that's where I'm going to end. I think that's enough pins... For one day, I have many more uh, pins, uh, silver tone, with rhinestones, without rhinestones, uh, pins that I've restored. So I hope that uh, you'll keep watching my videos, and I'll be hunting for some more jewelry jars. They, they uh, seem to be few and far between right now, but um, this is another way to look at jewelry, and this is the, the jewelry that I keep, the stuff that I really like. So I hope you liked it too. Thanks very much for joining me. It's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes.